So two female mices are talking and the first one says to the other one, you know, right now I'm dating a bat. And the second one says, a bat? But isn't it too ugly? And the first one says, well, it is, but it is a pilot. Welcome to my channel, I'll be your pilot speaking for this video. Greetings sky lovers, in this episode we're going to talk about the MCP. From the previous episode you already know that MCP stands for Mode Control Panel. Basically the name says it all, you're using this panel to control the modes of the autopilot, so that you can tell the autopilot to do whatever you desire it to do. A quick disclaimer before we start, now the MCP and the different modes are interconnected with each other, meaning that if you engage a certain mode, another mode could activate automatically. Now if I talk about all the different interactions between the different modes, this video is going to be way too long. So what we're going to focus on this video is the primary use of each different mode. Why do we use it? When do we use it? Do we have to use it? <laughs> so let's begin. The first knob that you're going to see is the core selector knob. We're going to ignore that for now. The reason for this is that it's going to be explained a little bit later in the video when we're talking about another mode, to which it is connected, of course. But this we're going to discuss at the end again and you understand why at the end of the video. The next switch we're going to discuss is the auto throttle arm switch. Now, as the name suggests, we use this mode to arm the auto throttle. Arming the auto throttle means that the auto throttle is engaged without any mode being engaged. Now, we have a couple of auto throttle modes, but first I'm going to start with the one that is not shown on the MCP. And this is the TOGA mode. TOGA stands for takeoff and go around. Okay, I need to put some context for this one. During the cockpit preparation, the pilots are going to put data into the FMC. If you remember, the FMC is the flight management computer, which is used for all the calculations required for the flight. Now, the TOGA mode is engaged with those two little buttons, which are conveniently placed on the auto throttle levers. Usually, during the takeoff row, we need the maximum thrust of the engines. Meaning that when you engage the TOGA mode, you are going to squeeze the full thrust that the engines can produce to perform your takeoff. That being said, sometimes let's say that we don't have a lot of weight. That means that we don't need to use the full thrust of the engines and by setting all the required inputs in the FMC, we will request from the engines a lower takeoff thrust. Now, when do the N1 comes in handy and why do we even have that button? So you can imagine that the airplanes are fairly large and in order for them to stay in the air, they need a lot of thrust, which means they need powerful engines, which means that the temperatures and pressures inside that engine are going to be really, really high. And as any material being metal or composite or whatever the material it might be, the more stress you put on it with temperature, pressure and so on, the more you're going to fatigue them and you're going to shorten their lifespan. So the engineers and designers of the airplane, they decided that 5 minutes is the maximum time you can use the takeoff thrust of the engines. And after that you need to reduce the thrust and you reduce it to the maximum climb thrust that the engines can produce for extended period of time. And this is where the N1 button comes. Once you press the N1 button, approximately at 1500 feet, the thrust levers would move back a little bit and they will give you slightly less thrust. But of course, in any moment, for any reason, if you need more thrust, it is available to you. Okay, but what is the meaning exactly of N1? Well, as we already discussed, the temperatures and the pressures inside the engines are really, really high. And just like any other engine, it has rotations per minute. So without being exact, let's say you have 30,000 rotations per minute of the engine, it would not be really convenient to say, okay, put the thrust at 30,487 rotations per minute. So what the engineers did is they compared the rotations per minute of the fan blade of the Boeing 737 engine, which percentages from 0 to 100%. In reality, it's a little bit more than 100%, but that's a different story. So the N1 percentage is the main reference we use to determine how much thrust the engines are producing at the moment. The N1 is a mode that you're only going to use during the climb phase, because why would you use maximum thrust during descent? It's like going with a car downhill with, with a lot of power. It just doesn't make sense. So the N1 is normally used during the climb. So put that N1, use the maximum climb thrust that you can and escape from your problems from the ground as fast as you can. 
Okay, so the next mode of the auto throttle that we're going to talk about is the speed mode. Now, during regular operations, we don't really use the speed mode. Now, pressing the speed button is going to engage MCP speed mode, provided of course that the other modes would allow us to engage it. Because as we said, different modes interact with each other and there might be a situation where you cannot engage MCP speed mode. But for the purposes of explaining, let's say you've engaged it. What this is going to happen is it's going to op open this little window, it's called the speed window, and using this knob you'd be able to manually insert the desired indicated airspeed that you want to fly the airplane with. Meaning that you're going to reach out with your hand and you're going to set the exact speed that you want to fly the airplane with. And the speed mode is really convenient because when you are under ATC radar vectors and you are under speed control, meaning they tell you what speed you need to have at that present moment, you can engage that mode and you can manually set the speed that you want to fly with to comply with the ATC requirements. During normal operations, we don't usually engage the MCP speed mode by pressing the speed button because in reality when we use some of the other autopilot modes, the MCP speed mode would engage automatically. Another cool feature of that button is that if it is already engaged at MCP speed mode and you press it again, which means you deselect that mode, the auto throttle will return in its armed position. And when the auto throttle is armed, it is actually going to give you speed protection. Meaning that if the speed that you've selected in the indicated airspeed window drops below a certain value, the auto throttle would automatically engage again in MCP speed mode to regain the lost speed. Which pretty much means that the airplane is like, I got you bro, I got you. That being said, although you're going to have these protections, it's the pilot duty to monitor and control the speed. As you can see, we have some additional buttons next to the speed button. We're going to ignore them because the video is going to be too long, but if you'd like me to explain them, just write me in the comments and I will. But anyway guys, that was my time for today and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!